please subscribe to my channel, audio novels, see playlist for other chapters and novels, I do not translate the novels, credits goes to original translator and author of the novel, I only make it as an audio book. So it would be easy to just listen while doing other things. If you like my work, please consider buying me coffee, at ko-fi.com slash audio novels, the link is on description. Thank you thank you and thank you very much for your support. It really makes a difference. Chapter 151, The Auspicious Casino. Li Qingshan said, is the Academy of the Hundred Schools really that great? So much so that you think of it constantly, sir? Zhu Wenban said, that's the foundation of Great Xia the place that gathers all the young talents across the 1500 kilometers of the Clear River Prefecture. Of course, it's a good place. What do you think of my talent for cultivation? Li Qingshan praised. Sir, you are obviously outstanding to have reached the sixth layer of chi practitioner at your age and become the magistrate of an entire district, standing above millions. He could not help but sigh inside. It spanned 1,500 kilometers. That was the size of Western Europe. Just what kind of site would it be for all the talents in an area as large as that to gather in one place, cultivating and learning together? Zhu Wenbin shook his head with a bitter smile. How am I outstanding? I'm just barely the average. As for my status as a district magistrate, True prodigies have no need for these additional factors for cultivation. They would never waste time on governing people. All they need to do is focus on cultivation, and they will make it further than me. He was a sixth layer chi practitioner, yet he was barely the average. Li Qingshan was slightly surprised. There are many generations of people of talent in the world. There's no need to underestimate yourself, sir. He was not surprised by the fact that there were many people better at practicing qi than him, as he understood that his talent for practicing qi was nothing special, and he had only just started. He did not have any guidance either, constantly relying on common pills like qi gathering pills. It was very likely for those from large qi practitioner clans to begin cultivating since young. They would be able to resolve their queries by asking powerful masters or seniors, and they would eat precious pills that he would not have even heard of. If their cultivation talent was just rather decent on top of all of this, they would be prodigies of cultivation, whether it be time, resources, or talent. There were plenty of people that surpassed him. There was nothing unfair about having people at a higher cultivation than him. This was what a head start was. Regardless of the world or age, this would always happen. Compared to grumbling, he might as well put in some more effort instead. Were those kings and lords really just born more superior than everyone else? Zhu Wenban said, your commander Hua Chengzhen is the same. Although he comes from a renowned clan, he has always remained in the Academy of the Hundred Schools to study. Even now, he has yet to completely leave it. When I see him, I even have to call him senior brother. There's a saying that that the talents of the world all emerge from the hundred schools. You really should consider it. Then I must check it out in the future. When that time comes, I hope you can help me out, sir. Li Qingshan had once heard from Gu Yanying that Hua Chengzhen was a tenth layer chi practitioner. Gu Yanying had even lectured him to stop hanging out with women so much. Back then, he still did not really have a perspective on what a tenth layer chi practitioner was, but now, he understood just what that meant. He had opened all of his extraordinary meridians and was a single step away from the first heavenly tribulation. Even if leaking and demonified, there was no way he could defeat someone like that. Zhu Wenban said, this falls within my duty, so you can't call it help. I'm basically under no constraints in Jiaping City and there's not really any work I'm forced to do either. It's all up to me. However, there is something I must do, which is choose a hundred talented men and women every year to send them off to the Academy of the Hundred Schools to study. The requirements were surprisingly lax. Li Qingshan asked, that simple? As long as you have the talent to cultivate, Zhu Wenban said, entering is easy but remaining is difficult. How long you can remain there for will be up to your own ability. Li Qingshan pondered silently for a while. Oh right, do you still need money, sir? Zhu Wenban said, ever since I became the district magistrate, 
there hasn't been a single time when I don't need money, looks like you've reaped quite the harvest this time, Li Qingshan took out several millionthals of silver notes and handed it all over, dismissing it as all from the Qian family, he obtained over 50 qi gathering pills from Zhu Wenbin, and as a result, the number of pills on him broke 300 once again, it would be enough to last him a short while, regular qi practitioners experienced a limited frequency of ingesting pills, however, to a demon like him, he could never get enough of them, he would be forced to budget it carefully, if only there was a day when he could eat pills as he wished, moreover, the qi gathering pills he obtained from Zhu Wenban all had fantastic purity and quality, every single one of them was tiny, although their effects were the same, they were much smaller than Qian Yanyan's qi gathering pills, were these pills refined by you, sir, Zhu Wenban said, I once studied beneath a renowned master of the school of medicine who specially focused on alchemy and apothecary, it's just qi gathering pills, so it obviously proves no difficulty to refine. The materials for qi gathering pills were relatively easy to collect as well, as the magistrate of an entire district, a single order of his could prompt countless people to go searching for medicinal herbs. Li Qingshan thought about how if he had the opportunity, checking out the Academy of the Hundred Schools would be quite a good idea, it was impossible for him to seek guidance over refining pills, creating talismans, or formations from a person he just came across on the street, it would be best if he formally studied a little instead, out of wealth, companionship, method, and environment, he could not go without companionship, but now was still not the time, there were many powerful foundation establishment cultivators in Clear River City, it would be very easy for Xiaoan to be discovered if he just hid in the jar like this, he needed to rebuild the boy's body first, Li Qingshan stood up and bid farewell, leaving the government office, he did not travel in the direction of Clear River, but westward instead, he left the city along the main path, dot, 35 kilometers away from Jiaping city, within the auspicious casino of Silver Mountain Town, although Silver Mountain Town was just a town, it was more prosperous than most cities, as there really was a mountain of silver here, who knows how many silver mines were hiding beneath the mountain, and who knows just how many people had struck it rich overnight and lost their lives on another night, although the auspicious casino was a casino in a town it was no worse than those first-rate casinos, moreover, it welcomed everyone, regardless of wealth, treating everyone the same, as long as you had silver, you could gamble and try your luck there, whether it be the mine owners who had suddenly struck it rich or those miners who worked in precarious situations, they would all come here to try their luck, under the brilliant lantern light, curses, laughter, and roars of anger poured into everyone's ears, the smell of sweat, smoke, and perfume mingled together, everyone's gazes were firmly fixed on the gambling table, they clenched their hands as their eyes widened, their expressions changed and twisted with the numbers on the dice, there was pleasure, anger, sorrow, and joy, however, the expressions of the gamblers would often end in anger and sorrow, only Shi Jixiang remained in pleasure and joy, he was the boss of this auspicious casino, he held two large, golden spheres in his hands as he constantly looked around, his chubby face seemed like a smiling Buddha's, always plastered with a smile, when he looked down from the second floor of the casino, there would be benevolence in his eyes as well, what a group of idiots, two large men carried up another man as he struggled, boss, we've caught him, the man knelt on the ground and wept, boss Shay, great hero Shay, grandfather Shay, please, I beg you, I'll give my minds, my property, I'll give it all to you, please show some benevolence and spare my family, if I spare you, who'll spare me, then, could you please extend the loan, I will definitely gather all the money for you, Shi Jixiang said, if you are in debt, you gotta pay it, that's how the world works, even your wife and daughter are busying themselves in the joy house, you're a man, so how can you just loaf around, why don't you get into the mines and put some back into your work, why you actually, Shi Jixiang sighed helplessly, people can die, 
but debts can't. If you vanish, what am I supposed to do? Shi Jixiang you son of a bitch. The dice were rigged. You cheated me. Even if I die, I'll never spare you. The man suddenly lost control of his emotions. He owed this usury a snowballing debt. He would never be able to pay it back in his lifetime. The only fate waiting for him was dying in the pitch black depths of the mines. However, before he was even done, he was knocked out by a slap from a large man beside him. However, Shi Jixiang lost his temper at the man. Why did you hit him with so much force? What if you end up killing him? Are you supposed to replace him in the mines for me? TSK TSK, look, what a pitiful person. I can't fall asleep whenever I see someone as pitiful as him, so don't let me see him again. The burly man obliged and carried the man out. Only then did Shi Jixiang recover his smile. He liked to gamble a lot and he knew how to gamble very well. With his gambling techniques, he had brought ruin to several mine owners already. He had already become the largest mine owner in all of Sylvan Mountain Town. As for the mine owners who did not gamble, he had plenty of ways to deal with him, as not only was he good at gambling, but he also possessed first-rate martial arts. He could spend tremendous sums of money to gather a group of good men who could both fight and oppress. With those two things, he would become the only mine owner in all of Silver Mountain Town, and he would continue smiling like that. It's right here. Outside the main entrance, a young man held a piece of paper and confirmed the two words on the plaque above the entrance to be auspicious casino. Afterwards, he strode in. The guards at the entrance studied him and welcomed him with smiles. They did not try to stop him at all. Only once the young man had entered did they discuss with smiles not a bad stature. Hey, he probably could do a year or two in the mines. Li King Shan liked to eat and drink, and with his rather unsuccessful experiences of having women attend to him while dining, he had basically tried prostitutes already. However, this really was his first time gambling. He found novelty in everything, so he constantly looked around. He arrived before a gambling table. They were playing an extremely simple game of big or small. As a result, he just casually tossed in 1000 tls of silver notes, betting it all on big. Note, if you're wondering why eating, drinking, visiting prostitutes, and gambling are listed together, there's a Chinese idiom that basically describes the four activities. Basically, they go hand in hand for indulging in worldly pleasures. Li King Shan wants to try them all. Note, big or small is a rather common gambling game in China. Basically, you just roll one or several dice and see whether the sum of the dice forms a larger sum, big, or a smaller sum, small. This surprised the gamblers, but they had seen larger bets before. As a result, they just dismissed him as some ignorant young master who had managed to escape from his clan. The bets have been cast, roll. And just as expected, it was big. Li King Shan accepted his silver cheerfully before betting it all on big again. A while later, the ruckus in the surroundings gradually vanished. The gamblers' mouths all hung agape with mixed expressions as they looked at the small hill of silver notes and silver pieces in front of Li King Shan. He had already won 16 rounds consecutively. The dealer had been changed twice as well, but that was not enough to stop his winning streak. He threw all of that into a bet once again. In the beginning, there were still some gamblers who gambled with him and managed to win some money, but now, there was no longer anyone bold enough to gamble the same as him. A boy servant arrived beside Li King Shan. Brother, our boss has invited you to the second floor for a talk. Li King Shan glanced upstairs and said loudly, If you want to talk, then get down here and talk. What? You're afraid of people winning against you while you run a casino. He slammed the marble table and left behind a faint print on the thick heavy stone. Shi Jixiang finally could not smile any longer. Afterwards, he issued orders, clear the casino and gather the people. A tough one has come this time, a second-rate master at the very least. He seems like he has come to make trouble. He can't just be appeased with money. Li King Shan lowered his head and his lips curled into a smile. It would be for the best if you cleared the casino, and the more people the better. If you can gather a thousand people, 
I'll burn some incense on your grave, if you have a grave that is. Chapter 152, Flaws in the Plan. A while later, there was not a single gambler left beside him. Several dozen hostile men replaced them, armed with swords and blades. They either sneered or glared at Li King Shan. All of the doors and windows were shut now, not even a fly would be able to escape from here. Only then did Shi Jixiang slowly make his way down from upstairs. He spoke like everything was under his control. May I ask who you are, brother? If you tell me about your identity, you might even make a new friend today. If you're lacking money to cover traveling expenses, feel free to mention it. I. Shi Jixiang, am not a stingy person. Li Qingshan looked around and said in a pity, just this much? Although he had originally come with the intention of purging evil, it was obviously impossible for him to scour every corner of Sylvan Mountain Town after killing Shi Jixiang. He lacked both the time and energy for that. There were still another 26 missions and over 900 people waiting for him. However, when it came to something like teaching a lesson, Basically everyone who should have been here was here. Shi Jixiang was unsure about his motives, but he could tell that Li Qingshan had no plans to answer him. He was infuriated, and he took off his thin clothes, revealing a bulky upper body and the tattoo of a Buddha. He sat down in front of Li Qingshan. I'll gamble with you this time. Li Qingshan saw him strip and was ready to fight, but when he heard that, he was slightly surprised. Then he said, that works. Rattle. Rattle, rattle. Shi Jixiang rolled the dice viciously. He stared firmly at Li Qingshan with his small eyes. For some reason, he felt uneasy when he met those calm, unperturbed pupils that clearly divided the colors of the latter's eyes. However, he had fought and killed for many years now, so his mental fortitude was rather impressive. He forced back his uneasiness and slammed down the dice cup with a bang. He asked aggressively. Big or small? Li Qingshan casually cast his bet. Just like before, he bet all the silver on the table and went with big once again. Shi Jixiang raised an eyebrow. He channeled inner force into the cup before immediately lifting it. He roared with laughter. One, two, and four. That's small. You lose. At the same time, he circulated his true chi, and the men in the surroundings eyed Li Qingshan closely, ready to fight at any time. They were all wary of Li Qingshan flying into a rage from his loss and trying to hurt any of them. Li Qingshan laid out his hands. And then, Shi Jixiang was stunned. Originally, he thought that Li Qingshan would furiously label him as a cheat. What and then? If you're willing to gamble, then you need to be ready to lose. All right, I've lost. All of the silver is yours. With that. Li Qingshan kicked the marble gaming table. Not a single person present had thought that the heavy, sturdy, still table could be launched with such terrifying speed and might in a single instant, whistling through the air. Shi Jixiang's eyes narrowed as he was shocked. Even masters of external martial arts do not possess such strength. At the same time, he reacted by leaping up. The extraordinary martial arts he took pride in seemed so slow now. He could only watch as the dice and dice cup was launched into the air while the marble table slammed into him. Boom. Dust was kicked up into the air as the marble table slammed Shi Jixiang into the wall. It firmly lodged the lower half of his body into the wall as his bones shattered under the collision of the table. The men in the surroundings still seemed to be lost. Didn't they win? How had their mighty boss Shi been reduced to such a horrible state in the blink of an eye? Li King Shan ignored them. He walked over to the marble table. Shi Jixiang really was a first-rate master after all with how tenacious his vitality was. His lower body was crushed, but he still managed to remain conscious. WW who are you? Li Qingshan said, a hawk wolf guard on a mission. I find it annoying when people like you smile. This expression suits you better. He conveniently caught the falling dice on his side. And, you can't decide big or small through these. Without even looking back, he threw them backwards. The dice pierced a man who was just about to launch a sneak attack on him with his blade. Just what are you going to use for a gamble with me? Everyone immediately understood their disparity in strength and the fact that death was near. They rushed for the entrance without any regard anymore. 
They wanted to open the main entrance that they had just shut firmly. A man looked back in fright. A stream of fire that seemed like a dragon rolled over from Li King Shan's waist. Wherever it passed by, everyone was reduced to nothing, only leaving behind a set of clothes that fell to the ground slowly. This was basically even more terrifying than any bloody sight. He pushed against the entrance firmly before losing all consciousness. The fire snake opened its mouth and lunged towards Shi Jixiang before pausing again and looking at Li King Shan. Li King Shan waved his hand to express there was nothing more he wanted to say to him. However, Shi Jixiang opened his mouth. He was the one who had something to say, but his face was already lit up by the firelight. The fire snake immediately swallowed Shi Jixiang. The gamblers had not dispersed. Instead, they paced around outside the entrance. The night had just begun. They had yet to enjoy themselves fully. They believed that this ignorant kid from another place would suffer very soon, and the casino would reopen. However, there were other people who believed that only those with the ability would take a risk like this and that the kid would be a difficult opponent. As a result, they split into two sides and gambled on this matter. However, they waited for a very long time and the casino still had not opened up again. However, none of them were bold enough to force their way in either. People of the government opened the entrance only after the next morning arrived. The large casino was completely devoid of people. Dot. There was a speck of light in a tiny inn in the middle of nowhere. Li Qingshan unfurled his mental map of the green province and planned his destination for the next day. He used an invisible line to connect 27 specks together. 27 specks, 1000 people. Xiaoan sat to one side, looking at the mental map and Li King Shan. He seemed to be in thought. Li King Shan asked, Do you remember the number? How many was it? Xiaoan dipped his finger in a cup of tea and wrote on the table, 57. 26 specks, 943 people. Li King Shan corrected the number in his mind. He did not deal with Shi Jixiang's property. Ever since Xiaoan gave him a clear goal, that had become his greatest priority that he eagerly wanted to complete. If he could be a little faster, Xiaoan would be able to recover his body a little faster. However, he did not go without any benefits. Shi Jixiang was swallowed by the flames but he left behind a few talismans. Originally, this person had planned to use them as trump cards, but before absolute strength, he basically had no chance to use it. Li King Shan raised his head and smiled. We'll be done very soon. Let's go to Giant Deer Valley tomorrow and go find the horse bandits. What do you think? The route I planned is pretty good isn't it? Xian then wrote on the table. But if this continues, we'll alarm the others very soon, they will go into hiding. That's true. We can only move a little faster then and travel day and night. If they end up hiding, that'll be troublesome. Li King Shan was slightly taken aback. He rubbed his chin in thought and found that Xiaoan really had a good point. These people were not mobs from games who would pace around in the same place, waiting to be slain. Though, once they were slain, new ones would definitely spawn, as there would never be an end to people like them. News always spread rapidly through the Jiangu. As long as he repeated this a few more times, probably all the figures of the Jiangu on the blacklist would realize that their end was coming, and then they would subsequently vanish into hiding. Just which Chi practitioner would waste their precious time to scour the world for them? Li King Shan did not want to waste this time either. This was also the reason why the Hawk Wolf Guard could not eliminate them all. Chapter 153, The West Gate Granny. Xiaowen was willing to search for them with him slowly, to advance slowly with him. If they found someone, they would kill them, but if they did not, there was no need to panic. However, seeing how impatient Li King Shan was, Xiaoan did not want him to trouble himself over his matters, so he came up with an idea. Why don't we find a way to gather them together? Li King Shan gasped in admiration. Compared to looking for them one by one, he could try inviting all of them to a certain place before taking them down in a single swoop. If he wanted to grind mobs, then he obviously had to lure mobs. Why hadn't he thought of such a simple principle? He rubbed Xiaoan's head. I couldn't tell, but this little head of yours sure can scheme. Flattered, 
Sexy Awan lowered his head in embarrassment. After being inspired like that, Li King Shan's thoughts immediately sprang to life. Afterwards, he searched through the files from the missions and finally found a name, Chengxi where he occupied an island on a large lake to the south. He called himself the Island Lord of Cherishing Flowers. He was a confident romantic and had a rather obscene nature. In the past, he had committed over a dozen acts of sexual assault. He was also the person with the highest cultivation in Li Qingshan's 27 missions, at the first layer of Chi Practitioner. He was extremely renowned among the unorthodox martial arts practitioners, and the files mentioned that he had vast connections. In the eyes of the Hawk Wolf Guard, he thrived in a zone that no one had any interest in, yet he could also defeat all practitioners of martial arts. He could be described as a master who lived within the cracks of the system. Li King Shan muttered to himself, just from a single birthday celebration, Kian Yanian managed to invite so many people to congratulate him. You might be slightly weaker, but you shouldn't be much worse. Right now, all I need is quantity, not quality. Of course, that probably was not a coincidence like his birthday had just come up, but whether it was getting married or having children, there were plenty of excuses. If he did not have any excuses, he could create one for him, and then invite many masters on the blacklist over to celebrate. The corner of Li Qingshan's lips gradually curled up. Perhaps there would be many unexpected extras to it all. Dot. Sylvan Mountain Town the third day after Li Qingshan had left, in the middle of the night, amidst the thick mist, a magnificent carriage was pulled along slowly by a horse. As the wheels rolled over the cobblestone road, it did not produce any sound at all. It was as if a layer of foam separated it from the ground. It stopped silently in front of the auspicious casino. A handsome teenager in red disembarked from the carriage and entered the casino with his head held high. Shi Jixiang was gone, but he had five leaders beneath him. Two of them died at Li King Shan's hands that night. The other three had been watching over the mines and other property, which was why they managed to avoid it. Currently, they had gathered together with their subordinates and were locked in an intense discussion over how they were supposed to divide this chunk of meat. They went into so much detail that it even included Shi Jixiang's concubines. The three of them laughed obscenely together. The atmosphere was rather harmonious. They got along rather well. However, their faces changed as soon as they reached the topic of the profitable auspicious casino. They argued so furiously that they almost drew their weapons. The young man in red walked into the casino at this very moment. He seemed alone and very frail, with no signs of martial arts or chi. However, he behaved in a very arrogant manner, so obviously he was not well received. Where the hell did this kiddo come from? This isn't a place you should have come to. Hurry up and get out of here. As soon as the person finished talking, his head fell from his shoulders. His expression was still one of shock. He had no idea why the world had suddenly flipped on him. Only at this moment did a cold snort ring out from the carriage outside the casino. A withered finger extended out from the curtained windows of the carriage. The teenager in red smiled. Thank you, ma'am, an innate master. The three leaders immediately paled in fright. It was not just an innate master, but one that was unimaginably powerful. Probably only Qi practitioners who had split open a sea of Qi like Zuo Zibo could witness the true gateway to practicing Qi. Even powerful sixth layer Qi practitioners would have to rely on spiritual artifacts if they wanted to kill someone from several dozen meters away. Yet she managed to do so with true chi alone. This was completely different from using techniques. If Li Qingshan used a suitable technique, he could launch such a long-ranged attack as well, but in terms of using his true chi alone, 10 meters would have been his limit, and he would have only been able to knock people away, not behead them. As for regular second layer chi practitioners, being able to reach 3 meters away would already be an impressive feat. After all, if the power of techniques was the same as directly using true chi, why would chi practitioners put effort into creating techniques and condense true chi into techniques during battle? An old, screechy voice rang out, you'll answer whatever question he asks. If you don't know, then investigate. If he doesn't get his answer, 
all of you will die. Everyone in the casino trembled all over. The boy in red took out a portrait. Was he the person who came to the casino that night? Depicted in a lifelike fashion within the portrait was Lee King Shan. A while later, the boy reported back, Mom, I've confirmed that he's Lee King Shan. He has left Silver Mountain Town now. I wonder where he has gone. He has probably gone to Giant Deer Valley. She seems to have grasped Lee King Shan's tracks completely. Then let's set off now. How impatient. This time, an old hand extended out from the carriage curtains, except the long nails were painted bright red. It was a rather strange sight. A series of cries rang out in the casino. An ordinary blade suddenly began to dance and swing around as white streaks killing everyone in the casino one by one. Compared to directly killing people with true chi, borrowing a tool or artifact was still much simpler. Of course, this would be even more simple if it was a spiritual artifact. Everyone in the casino knew martial arts, and the three leaders were all second-rate masters as well. However, against the nimble blade, they could not hold their ground at all. In just a few seconds, the casino became littered with corpses. Only then did the blade drop to the ground with a clang. The teenager in red was slightly surprised. All he heard was the old voice in the carriage. They've insulted my Gia, so how can they be left alive? The teenager immediately showed great happiness. He entered the carriage and threw himself into the arms of an old woman. The old woman was dressed in red and had a head full of grey hair. Her face was shriveled, but as she held the handsome young man, they seemed like a pair of lovers. They were not the only two in the carriage. There were three more young men, all dressed in red and just as young and handsome. One of them grumbled, Granny is picking favorites. Granny only spoils Gia. Gia said, we've all sworn that we would serve Granny for the rest of our lives. So you're not allowed to be jealous. Granny, why must you personally look into this matter? Can't you just send disciples from the disciplinary hall? It's very likely that what happened to the parlor of clouds and rain in Jiaping City is related to this person. You'll need a sixth layer chi practitioner at the very least to kill Zhao Liang King without raising any attention. If we send regular disciples, we'll just be sending them to their deaths. There's no point in staying in Clear River all the time either. We can relieve our boredom by going on a stroll. The granny's formal title was the Westgate Granny, not because her surname was Ximon, or Westgate, but because the sect of clouds and rain had four gates and four grannies representing the four directions. Every single one of them were powerful ninth layer chi practitioners who had opened all eight extraordinary meridians. There was no longer anyone bold enough to refer to her by her actual name within the sect, while other people gradually forgot about her original name as well. Only the title of Westgate Granny that represented her status remained replacing her name. Chapter 154, The Island Lord of Cherishing Flowers. The teenager who had just been grumbling said, it's all because Granny became interested when she saw how well built and tough Lee King Shan was, but Granny already has us, so Granny can't be so fickle. He spoke with a tone like he was in love. The teenagers all looked at the Westgate granny with utter infatuation. It was not forced at all. They were just like when the men of Jiaping City saw courtesan Furong. As a second layer chi practitioner, Furong's arts of charm were already enough to drive regular people crazy and strike fear into the hearts of chi practitioners, so just how powerful would the arts of charm of this ninth layer chi practitioner, the Westgate granny? B. It was not something that a few normal boys could resist. Even chi practitioners would always do whatever they could to fulfill their desires, let alone ordinary people. The Westgate granny said in a spoiled manner, All right, all right, I'll kill him as soon as I see him. As long as granny loves us, does it matter if granny has other men? We're all good brothers. As they spoke amorously, the carriage rolled slowly and silently over the cobblestone path. Upon closer inspection, a gap of around an inch remained between the carriage wheels and the path as if a cushion of air existed. The horse's hooves landed on the ground as normal. After a few inscriptions flashed, the treasured horse that usually pulled the carriage during the day could now take off effortlessly. It rushed off at an unbelievable speed. They left behind a casino full of corpses. Afterwards, 
the little caretakers under the little leaders gathered together and began a new discussion, just like the grass that never stopped sprouting on the plains. Perhaps, people originally unrelated to all of this would join in as well, which would be followed with further conflict and slaughter. This was the Jiangu. Li Qingshan still ended up going to Giant Deer Valley, as it was not very likely for these horse bandits to accept the invitation from the island lord of cherishing flowers. The files indicated that the horse bandits were composed of people with the bloodline of barbarians. Every single one of them had a great brown beard. Even if the island lord of cherishing flowers invited them, it was probably unlikely for these barbarian horse bandits to visit the island on their horses, so he wanted to just finish them off conveniently. The horse bandits dwelled on the vast, grassy plains. They had no set place where they stayed. The giant deer valley was only one of their resting places. After Li Qingshan realized that it was all futile, he did not give up. Instead, he laid on the ground and used his nose before closely studying the traces there. He was like a wild beast with extremely sharp senses. As his demon form gradually strengthened, the world in his eyes became richer and more colorful. There were many layers to it. His tracking ability had almost become part of his instincts. The smell and traces from the ground were still very fresh. They were not far, and from the traces on the ground, there were at least 200 horse bandits, which made Li Qingshan's eyes light up. As a result, he immediately set off. True Qi gathered in his feet, and he crossed through the grass that stood as tall as a man. He moved swiftly under the amber sky as night set in, and two hours later, he had covered 50 kilometers and finally found the horse bandits. Within the smoke, the horse bandits rushed at the traveling merchants letting out war cries. The merchants did their best to stop them and raise their defenses, but the thrumming of horse hooves were unable to hide the fear in their eyes. The curved blades lit up the surroundings with dazzling, white light. Suddenly, someone said, what's that? A cloud of dust rushed over from the northwest direction, heading directly towards the group of horse bandits. A figure leapt high into the sky, through the dust and smoke, landing on the mount of the bandit leader. Li Qingshan stood on the horse's saddle and pressed one hand against the bandit leader's head while his other hand grasped the reins. He forcefully turned the horse around. The moment he brushed past the mercantile caravan, the merchants all raised their heads and saw a teenager in high spirits. His expression gave everyone a false impression. It was as if he was not holding the head of the bandit leader, but a huge chunk of gold. Someone murmured, that's a person. The horse bandits rushed over as they cursed. They could not worry about the caravan anymore. They had to save their leader. After that, no one ever saw the infamous horse bandits of Giant Deer Valley anymore. After arriving in the middle of the boundless wilderness, Li Qingshan swung down with his right hand and slammed the horse bandit's head into his chest. The tremendous force spread to the horse, and it collapsed onto the ground loudly. When the horse bandits arrived, Li Qingshan had already vanished. They raised their heads swiftly, and a sky of fire filled their gazes. The number changed to 755. Just a day after Li Qingshan had left Giant Deer Valley, the carriage arrived. The same teenager in red disembarked to check. Granny, he's not here. This kid is pretty quick. The West Gate Granny unfurled a mantle map and pointed at a location. Let's go to the next place. It was exactly the same as Li Qingshan's original route. She had a complete grasp over how Li Qingshan would go about his missions. However, the boys all refused. They all grumbled about how it was just too boring. They had grown accustomed to the joys and pleasures in Clear River City. They disliked all the traveling. The West Gate Granny said in a doting manner, All right, we'll rest when we get to the next city. Dot. It was a tiny puddle on the map. But when he saw it in person, it was a huge, misty swamp. This is the place. This bastard sure knows how to live. Li Qingshan stowed the mental map away and cast his gaze into the distance, piercing through the mist. He vaguely made out an island. The island was covered with green, shady willow trees, 
with some red walls and green tiles poking out. Next to the lake was a city. The scenery was wonderful, yet it was also highly convenient. This really was a good place for someone to settle down and live out the rest of their lives. However, when he thought about how someone like him could settle down and live out the rest of his life, Li Qingshan felt extremely discontent. Afterwards, he licked his lips as he imagined the smiles dropping from their expressions with the malevolence and pleasure of a demon. Using the night, he tread across the water and stepped onto the island on the other side. Only then did he see the luxurious estate clearly. There were many armed guards patrolling outside the estate. The security was very tight, but to Li Qingshan's eyes, such a security system was basically non-existent. Li Qingshan gently kicked off the ground and landed on the eaves several dozen meters away before rushing towards the largest building. Behind a veiled curtain, the pale bodies of people moved around. Moans and verbal teasing constantly sounded out. Master, you're so good. Li Qingshan rubbed his nose. He felt like he would always intrude at a time like this. At such a late time of the night. The bad people would be going at it in bed, while the good person could only watch the eroticism that was vividly presented before his eyes. A gentle cough drowned out all of the sounds within the obscenity. Someone sprang up from the bed and lifted the veiled curtain. Who is it? Two pairs of eyes met. Both of them were rather stunned. Li Qingshan had never thought that Shinxue would actually be elderly. Most of his hair had grayed already. Only then did he suddenly remember that the files detailed that there had been an attempt to bring him to justice, but he discovered them and fled, which led to the case being placed aside. As a result, even a young boy would become an old man after all this time. On the other hand, Shenxua saw a young man in cloth robes sitting boldly on an armed chair, glaring right back at him. Although he did not give off any special aura, just his ability to appear in Shenxua's bedroom silently was enough to shock him. Put on your clothes. There are some things I want to discuss with you. Li Qingshan placed something on the table before standing up. Shenxi were rushed to the table. He saw the item and stiffened. His face paled as he cradled it in his hands carefully. Coldness pierced his bones. He trembled once more, and he became even whiter. It was a black wolf bearing its fangs and claws, forged out of black iron, in a small pavilion shaded by trees. Li Qingshan leaned on the railing and gazed at the scenery of the lake. Shenxiwu had put on clothes and rushed over while he cradled the black wolf tablet in his hands. Sir, may I know your name and why you've come to my humble abode? Li Qingshan took back the black wolf tablet. Don't you know what you've done? You're the culprit, Shenxiwu. He had seen quite a lot of detective television series in his past life. So he copied how they naturally exuded confidence. With a thud, Shenxiwa's knees crumbled to the ground. Sir, they were all deeds that I committed when I was young and muddle-headed. Sir, you are a great man, so please just spare me. If there's anything you require, I will do everything I can to ensure it is obtained or achieved. A powerful figure among the unorthodox martial arts practitioners of the Jiangu, a first player innate master had lost all of his bearing, kneeling on the ground and begging for his life. Li Qingshan had not even done anything to him yet, this was all just from seeing his black wolf tablet. Shenxiwa felt extremely helpless. Who would be willing to serve a kid who was several decades younger? As soon as he saw the black wolf tablet, he thought about running, but he was reluctant to abandon everything he had built up. And, if the hawk wolf guard really tried to find him, they would always find him. As for fighting, that was even more impossible, let alone his fate if he lost, even if he somehow managed to win. His entire family would accompany him to the grave whether it be because of infuriating the Hawk Wolf Guard or killing a Hawk Wolf Guard. When Li Qingshan stood before him, he was no longer just a lonely teenager, but a terrifying system of violence from the government. Anyone from the so-called Jiang Wu could only act subserviently before this system. Of course, it was impossible for him to understand the hostile relationship between Li Qingshan and Zhao Zibo. That was something well beyond his reach. However, Sheng Xue was still hopeful. Since Li Qingshan had not attacked him right from the get-go, it meant that he still had a chance. As a result, 
he gathered his courage to come here so that he could hear what Li Qingshan wanted to say to him. As expected, Li Qingshan said, I have something I want you to do for me. He sat down on the stone bench in the pavilion and looked at Sheng Xiwa from above. He did not tell him to walk over and sit down with him. Li Qingshan could treat ordinary people with courtesy, but if he was supposed to dwell on this bit of courtesy with someone like this fellow, there would be something wrong with his head. Compared to murder or robbery, he found these acts to be even more disgraceful. If it were not for the sake of his plan, he would have wanted to kill Sheng Xiwa right now. Sheng Xiwa's face lit up. Please let me know, sir. Li King Shan took out 24 files and tossed them before Sheng Xiwa. I want you to invite all the people mentioned in the to here, including their subordinates and disciples. The more the better. Sheng Xiwa's expression changed drastically. He immediately thought of what Li King Shan was trying to do. He was such a young teenager yet he was actually hiding such terrifying thoughts. He actually wanted to take out all the unorthodox masters within the surrounding region of several hundred kilometers in one fell swoop. Li Qingshan said, it can be a birthday, having children, or other reasons. You might have obtained a peerless cultivation method or divine weapon for everyone to come and appreciate. You can handle the exact details, Sheng Xiwa said, sir tea that'll be unrighteous of me to do. Li King Shan broke into laughter. You're a rapist, yet you still mention the word righteousness. Sheng Xiwa became bright red. He disputed groundlessly, those are all matters of the past. I even left quite a lot of money for those women. T they aren't necessarily unhappy with the outcome. Before he was even done, a great force pushed his head down. With a bang, his head struck the ground heavily, drawing blood. Chapter 155. The Pill Seizing Gathering. Li Qingshan stepped on Sheng Xiwa's head and breathed in deeply. He said in a deep voice, out of the women you speak of, three of them have committed suicide. I don't know about the others, but let me warn you. Don't piss me off. Yes. Yes. Sheng Xiwa murmured. He was willing to face a second layer Chi practitioner with his strength at the first layer. Even if he could not defeat them, he could still escape, but only then did he realize that he was wrong. The step was so fast that he could not react at all. As for the heavy, murderous aura, he found it to be even more stifling than the pressure on his head. Li King Shan gradually lifted his foot. Consider it. Sheng Xiwa kept his head lowered for quite a while before raising it. Are you going to spare me if I do? Li King Shan said, I'm not here to discuss with you. You can accept it or turn it down. You are welcome to try your luck. Under Li King Shan's contemptible gaze, Sheng Xiwa said, I accept. Li King Shan smiled and personally helped him up. You could have just said that from the beginning. He had no plans to spare Sheng Xiwa. However, since he planned to use him, he could not express this intention of I'll definitely kill you. Otherwise, that would not be called gallantry, but idiocy. Sheng Xiwa's expression eased up slightly. Li King Shan saw how his facial features were neat and dignified. He must have been handsome when he was young. You came from a well-off family basically a clan. Why did you do all of those things? Sheng Xiwa said, I was ignorant in my youth. I was ignorant. Sir, when would you like for these people to be gathered here? Li King Shan said, the sooner the better. Sheng Xiwa said, I don't really know some of them, and there are a few others who have their own plans as well. Even if I do invite them, they won't necessarily come. Li King Shan said, that'll depend on your ability as the island lord of cherishing flowers then. And, it doesn't have to be them. You are welcome to invite all of your good friends who have committed crimes with no conscience at all. The more the better. If there are too few and the gathering is far too cheerless, I might end up becoming upset. Sheng Xiwa's heart shivered. The person before him was young, but he was definitely not a soft-hearted figure. Otherwise, he would have never been able to come up with such a terrifying scheme. Now, all he could do was follow through with the plan reluctantly. He invited Li King Shan to stay in a smaller building near the lake and ordered his people to serve him carefully and not to disturb him. The next day, an invitation card was delivered into Li King Shan's hands. After receiving Li King Shan's approval, several dozen copies were made and sent off. They reached the hands of the various masters on the blacklist. This was the news on the Jiangu, 
the powerful unorthodox master, the island lord of cherishing flowers, who has fallen silent for quite some time, has obtained a bottle of pills. These pills can allow martial arts masters to reach the innate realm. He wants to sell it to a group of masters, so he invites everyone to the island of cherishing flowers on the 8th of the 8th month, at the beginning of autumn. You will contend against one another for it. The event will be called the Pill Seizing Gathering. Li King Shan sighed inside. This was basically what happened when he obtained the spiritual ginseng in the past. Cheng Xue was already an innate master, so he obviously could not use this pill, but to other first rate masters, this was an irresistible event. Even if they found it to be suspicious, they would still come and check it out. After casting his bait, he could wait quietly for the fish to bite. From that day onwards, Shinxue would visit him in person daily. He was extremely considerate for his needs. Li King Shan meditated and practiced Qi every day, without setting a foot outside his residence. The only thing the people on the island knew was that he was a valued guest of the island lord. They were afraid of disturbing him. Combined with the fact that they would sometimes hear him muttering to himself, they found it to be extremely strange and were even more reluctant to approach him. As a result, Li King Shan just meditated and practiced qi regardless of day or night, ingesting the qi gathering pills like water and converting it into demon qi and true qi. In less than 10 days, he had already ingested 200 of them, the effects were extremely obvious. On the second of the eighth month, his innate method of practicing qi finally broke through to the fifth layer. His true qi became even more powerful as they constantly raged through the Yang Heal Meridian. His ability to sense the spiritual qi of the world through his Feng Shiaku point became even sharper as well. It was like a blurry image that gradually cleared up. He was able to distinguish the meaning within the image bit by bit. Although he had not reverted to his demon form. It must have grown by quite a lot as well. Li King Shan left his residence. The sky was gloomy. It had begun drizzling three days ago. The heat of summer receded and coolness gradually set in. It was almost autumn. The eighth of the eighth was an auspicious day, while autumn was primarily about desolation, which made it an even better time to kill. Li King Shan already felt rather eager. He threw a punch and true chi pierced the air erupting with splashes on the surface of the lake. He looked back. When he saw Xi Awan leaning on the rail, he could not help but smile. Looking at his body of white bones, he thought of some things. Before all of this, there were still some preparations he needed to make. During the morning of the third, Sheng Xi were visited once again. Li King Shan said, Go prepare some clothes for children. Xi Awan would be rebuilding his body. But it was obviously impossible for him to rebuild his clothes as well. He needed clothing. Sheng Xiwa found the request to be rather strange, but he dared not think too much about it. Clothes for children? What size? Is it for a boy or a girl? A boy around seven or eight years old. Don't worry too much about the exact size, Li King Shan said. He felt rather excited inside. He felt like a father who was about to welcome his child into the world. The next day, Sheng Xiwa delivered over a dozen sets of clothes of various colors and styles. They were all made from silk of the highest quality. He even brought many toys for children. Li King Shan smiled. He thought about how Xi Awan was no ordinary child, so why would he play with these wooden toys? However, he did not mention it. He told Sheng Xiwa to continue preparing for the pill seizing gathering. He was determined to go through with this pill seizing gathering. However, he soon thought of how a great scheme like this that could overturn the entire Jiang Wu tended to be the specialty of villains. And, his thought of killing everyone in the gathering had an even more villainous vibe. However, he felt fantastic. It was a wonderful time since Xi Awan was about to gain a new life. He sighed emotionally just like a poet. With death comes birth. Afterwards, he gained some understanding towards the true meaning behind the path of white bone and great beauty. After Sheng Xiwa left, Xi Awan emerged from behind the curtains. He gently caressed the beautiful silk clothing with his bone fingers as he imagined how he would look like when he wore them. He raised his head and their eyes met. There was silence. The only sounds present were the pitter-patter of rain outside the window. However, 
The two of them felt silent joy inside. Afterwards, Xiaowan began to play with those toys happily. The pinwheels, spinning tops, and bamboo dragonflies. It surprised Li Qingshan. Afterwards, he thought about how he did not show enough care and concern for Xiaowan. Thinking further, he realized that the thing that he seemed to do the most with Xiaowan was killing people. Killing people was not necessarily a bad thing. In this cruel world, it should have been a crucial skill for survival. Adult beasts had to teach younger beasts the art of hunting. That was how Li King Shan comforted himself to avoid too much self-guilt. Afterwards, he just sat there and leaned his head against his hand. He thought deeply into the issue of Xiaoan's education. He needed to take him out to see the world more often in the future so that he could feel nature and all those things. Afterwards, he could not help but begin grinning. He felt warmth. The world was very cruel, but he was not alone. Dot. Even a lion would use its full strength to catch a rabbit. The day before the 8th, Li King Shan finished ingesting all of his qi gathering pills such that he was at his peak condition. By tomorrow, once those bastards all gather in the hall, what am I supposed to say as an opening line? For the sake of my personal happiness, please die. You twisted lot. Seems even more villainous. Dot. Am I pretty? The West Gate Granny asked. Why you are? A naked man covered in tattoos that depicted nine dragons lowered his head and called out in fright. The blood of his companions slowly flowed beneath his feet. Just because they laughed when they saw this ugly, old woman, they ended up falling apart into pieces. Then why aren't you looking at me? The West Gate Granny said with a sunken voice. The man slowly raised his head before becoming stunned. He had never seen such a beautiful woman before. Her cold eyes and nobility shook up his mind, almost making him lose control of himself. The portrait of a man suddenly appeared before him. The voice that was as beautiful as an Oriole's song asked, Have you seen this person before? He shook his head in a daze blaming himself for being unable to help her at all. Then you can go die. The shriveled mouth spat out these brutal words. The man immediately shattered his own skull with a palm strike. Even before he died, he still gazed at the West Gate Granny with infatuation. He smiled. Originally, he thought that he would only be a pirate for the rest of his life. But he had never thought he would be able to die for the person he loved. He felt happiness from the bottom of his heart. My life was all worth it. Leaving the den of the water snake gang, the West Gate Granny said furiously, Just where did the brat go? In the past few days, she followed the most optimal path for Lee King Shan, but she failed to find any signs of him. She completely lost track of him. Finally, she could not help herself anymore and lost her temper causing a great massacre. Behind her, the corpses of the water snake gang lay strewn on the ground. They would never be able to attack and rob people on the rivers again. Every single one of them smiled happily, dying for the sake of love. A teenager in red took out of a million invitation card from the bosom of the leader and handed it to the West Gate Granny. The West Gate Granny looked at the invitation card. After a while of thought, she revealed a sunken smile. I see. This kid has got some brains. I've underestimated him. Let's go to Lakeside City. On the 8th of the 8th, near Lakeside City on the island of Cherishing Flowers, Li King Shan tidied up his thoughts and took out his Nick Twin Entwining Blade, hanging it on his waist. He looked out the window and saw many small boats moving through the wind and rain stopping at the wharf. Many people emerged from them. Most of them carried weapons and were vicious looking. He could tell with a single glance that they were not kind folk. They matched up with the resources from Li Qingshan's file one by one. These unorthodox masters were worried about this being a trap, and they were wary of one another, so they all brought their best subordinates, just in case. However, unbeknownst to them, Someone within the shade of the green willows was counting them like sheep. 281, 342, 557. This lasted until night time. The number had already exceeded Li Qingshan's expectations. The island was decorated with lanterns and streamers, with a feast set up in the hall. With Shenxiwu as the host, 
These martial arts masters gathered in the hall. It was quite the banquet. Cheng Xua smiled and spoke cheerfully, without giving away anything at all. Some people said impatiently, Island Lord Shen, where are the pills? Please take them out and show us. Please subscribe to my channel. Audio novels. See playlist for other chapters and novels. Thank you.